right then folks, let's finish up this cabinet. Got a little interior lighting in it, it's looking pretty good. Oh yeah. Okay, this is going to be a little curved pediment piece to go on the top because I tend to do that on just about everything. So I'm just going to use my old trick of using a tape measure to create a large arc. I'm just going to take advantage of the table being a four feet long, uh, put a center line on this end, put a center line on the other end, although it doesn't need to be so accurate down there, and just scribe an arc. There we go. See what I think of that. Great. And remembering the trick to that is to set the blade as high as possible so that it makes it a lot easier to make that curve. That's still just a bit too much at the top. and rip a little off of that. Okay, that looks good. That, I like. I like it. I like it! And measure for a couple of little side pieces. <laughs> Lastly, a couple of brackets to put on the... Whoa, let's not knock this out here. A couple of nice little curved brackets that will sit on the bottom here. It's just a matter of finding uh, the right curve. Not bad. I'm going to say that curve right there. guys okay down there? Sorry for that. <laughs> How about we put you somewhere else for this? Like maybe up here. <laughs> Pair of brackets. I was thinking these brackets are way, way, way too small. So I need something a little bit bigger, which is bigger radius. And let's see, let's see, let's see. It's a... Pretty cool, eh? Looks like one piece of wood. But, ooh, it's two. All right, a little more tidying, and these will be much, much more suitable brackets. Hey there, if you'd like your very own Travels with Jordy t-shirt, stick around to the end of the episode. I'll show you how you can win one. Step, at least with the upper frame, is to uh, bung these uh, screw holes. Pretty straightforward. We'll just put a little dab of glue on there. A little dab of do there, a little dab of do. Yep, don't have a hammer handy, but that... We'll do it nicely. Perfect. Let that harden up and uh, trim those off. to uh, the daunting step of cutting the dado. Here we go. So the idea is to cut a, a dado or rabbit or whatever you want to call it, a little notch out of the back side of the cabinet uh, and leave it at the front so that the cut doesn't come all the way through so that the glass panel can sit in here against something and then have some more wood to hold it in. So I'm going to put it in the rudder behind the fence in other words, behind the bit and against the fence, and I'll be able to slide along there and cut out a little bit of a trough along here, come to here and then stop, start again here, and then stop. Now, huh, must remember, must travel this way because when you're behind the bit, you change the direction of feed. Anyway, so I'm gonna take tiny, tiny little bites because I do not want to uh, screw this up. I'm sure you've seen enough of this. I'll finish this up off camera. Okay, folks, it's hinge time, and I have agonized about how I'm going to hinge this. And, you know, I, I think I mentioned that I thought about knife hinges, other sorts of hinges, and I've just spent an hour online looking at various hinges, none of which really do I like for this particular little project. So I am going to do this ridiculous idea of simply putting a screw in from the outside. Just putting a screw in from here and then plugging it and the screw becomes a pivot for the hinge. All right, so wow, let's just do it. Let's just do it. So 
Okay, what I'm doing now is just setting it, the door frame, the window frame I want to have back just ever so slightly because I'll ease these front edges of this. Anyway, this is certainly the quickest possible hinge you could ever, ever drill. And there you can see the hole. I knew it would be very close to my old fastener there. What I need to do now is shape the front of this. Uh, in other words, carve or, or, or sand the front edge of this a little bit on a curve where the center of the radius is the center of the pin because as this rotates up, this corner is going to lift and it's going to come up into the cabinet. So I have to just sort of imagine a curve around there and take the edge of this off. See how that feels. Oh yeah, it's just touching, but I think I can just clean that up just a hair more. You know what? I think this is just fine. Just fine. Let's uh, let's uh, let's carry on. Put them on. I just put a little piece of cardboard in there to make it to jam it up stiff. Holy crikey! No stress. No stress. Okay then, it's time to put um, some of these trim pieces on. Just the slightest bit of glue and uh, we're off to the races. Just a little. And it goes right about there. Excellent! Right there, like that. Other side. Beautiful. Now let's clean that up before it dries. Looking pretty nice. Now, the brackets on the bottom, which are going to be a little more complicated. They go right there and right there. The trick here, of course, is going to be not putting a nail into my thumb. We're gonna let this dry overnight and do the final assembly and get some uh, oil on it in the morning. Hey, just want to send a quick thank out to Charles Freeman who sent me a few items off the Amazon wish list. Thanks so much, Charles. A whole box of stainless steel Craig screws for the Craig pocket screws. Sick. I love these things. And the absolutely dreamy Anchor proper single crimping tool. I've been using the double one, which is okay, but there's some risk of damaging the heat shrink, but this will be the absolute perfect solution. Costly though. Thanks again, Charles. Let's get to work with this stuff. Well, it's looking pretty good, and the glue is dried on the new sort of vanity pieces, but they're just glued and pinned, so I'm going to put just a few little screws in to make sure that they're relatively secure because I uh, sort of sheepishly admit, of course, these brackets are false. They don't actually do anything. Uh, so I do want to make sure that they're real, relatively structural. And then I'm going to assemble it for the last time because, of course, the hinge pins, being screws that I'm going to put bungs over, it's semi-permanent. I'm not going to glue the bungs so they could be removed, but it's not all that simple to take it apart. Okay, let's get some screws into this. Teeny, teeny, tiny little screws. Tiny little screws driven with a teeny, teeny, tiny little screwdriver. And that is structural. I need a couple of little metal strips, and I'll explain exactly how that's going to work in a second. Uh, but for the meantime, I'm cutting out four little strips out of this piece of aluminum bar. It's a little thicker than I need, but it'll certainly do. And here we go. Now a cutoff wheel was definitely not the best way to cut these, but in the absence of an appropriate blade in a saw, um, it'll do for now. <laughs> okay, let me try to explain these little plates then. And to see that, you have to understand where they're going to go. So if we come back through here into the aft cabin and close the door, the cabinet goes right here. And it's going to go right like this. Now, holding the camera in one hand and uh, uh, the cabinet in another, maybe you can see in the top corner there that the inside of the cabinet lines up, <laughs> I can't point with the camera hand, uh, with the inside of the style of the door. Um, the point being, these little brackets 
are gonna go right in there like that against the side of the style of the door and the inside of the cabinet and have tiny little screws put in this place. The reason for that is I didn't want to put any screws into the face of the door or into the panel. I wanted to be able to fasten this in such a way that I wasn't molesting the door too much. Let's see how well that works out. Okay, well I got those on, pretty straightforward. Let's see how the cabinet fits. Okay, nice and snug. I like that, I like that. Perfect. <laughs> Okay, now before I screw it to the actual cabinet, this is my last chance to give it a little alignment tweaking. So what I'm gonna do is make sure that it is still square. And when I say square, I don't mean square to the world necessarily. I mean square to the frame here, which is going to be difficult to change at this point. And it seems like it's just perfect. I love that. And how about the bottom? To be honest, I know that the bottom is a little bit stiff right now. It needs a little bit of sanding in this top corner, which I'm about to do. But on the whole, I would say that is pretty much a perfect fit. I just love it. I just love it. Okay, let's get it off and get some oil on this. No, assemble it. Here we go. I'm really doing this. Now I'll put it tight, but then I'll loosen them again so that the hinges actually work. Okay, so it's tight now. Back off a little. Oh, and that is so nice. So nice. I still have to put some stops in here, of course, but because I don't know what I'm gonna do for a latch yet, the latch may incorporate the stop itself, so I don't think I'll worry about that too much. Very, very nice. The bottom door. Got to hold it with your forehead trick has provided me years of enjoyment. And oh, very nice, very, very, very nice. To be friction fit, in other words, no glue. And um, obviously the reason for that is if I ever have to remove them, let's make them as easy to remove as possible. Oh, geez. Because these are tapered bungs, they'll hold very nicely. If you're just joining the show, you'll um, certainly be noting that my uh, finished prep is pretty lightweight. That's because uh, everything I finish, both inside and out, I put a first coat of tongue oil on. That tongue, T-U-N-G. It's an ancient, ancient finish. Um, it's an oil finish. Uh, as a result, it certainly can't be the only finish you put on because it can't handle uh, the UV and the weather and stuff like that. But I love the way it builds a deep, deep, rich um, texture and patina in the wood and the subsequent uh, coats of whatever I put on will absolutely make it look fantastic. Okay, so here we go. And again, as I've mentioned before, uh, because it's an oil finish, uh, it doesn't really dry right away. It's very, very forgiving. And uh, that's why I don't have to do a very tidy uh, prep because this cloth is effectively going to be a tack cloth uh, with the oil I'm putting on here. You'll notice in very short order, it will become quite dusty. There we go. So we just slather this on everywhere. Oh, I love the way that looks. All right, other than just running around and rubbing it in, that's done. Finished and installed. Well, not finished and not installed, but at least put up as a mock-up for you. So you can see how basically it's gonna work. It sits on the back of this door. And so when this door is opened, it basically becomes a bit of a night table for the bed. They can fold down, you can put a coffee on there, keep your phone in there. And uh, this is gonna have a stained glass panel in it and it'll open up and you can have access to, I don't know, book, whatever you're gonna keep in there. So I'm really, really pleased with the way that worked out. Now I just have to figure out some stained glass for it. Yeah. Hmm. 
Hello again folks, earlier in this episode I uh, mentioned that if you'd like to win a Travels Jody t-shirt you just gotta watch around to the end of the episode and here's how you can do it. Basically you need the secret word of the week. And use that word in a comment down below and I'll pick at random from the first 24 hours worth of comments and uh, if I pick you, you might win a t-shirt. And that secret word of the week this week is the name of the brewery for the beer of the week this week. Just gotta use that word. Cheers. Well hello there folks, this promises to be a very interesting beer of the week. I'm in downtown Victoria waiting for the MV Coho to arrive, uh, which is the ferry from Port Angeles, Washington State. And I don't know if you can see through the tree there, there she is. And aboard that vessel is a fine fellow named Scott who called me some time ago and offered to make me up a stained glass panel for the boat. And I had to try and figure out what I could do with that and well, now you see the whole thing coming together, don't you? Uh, he's made up a panel that's going to go in this cabinet, but Scott's in a really, really tight schedule. He can only take the ferry over and catch the next ferry back. So we have 15 minutes to meet on the street, install the panel in this cabinet, and of course, shoot a beer of the week. All right, well, they're here, the door is open, and they'll be unloading in just a few minutes. I've ever mentioned how much I love this boat. It's been running non-stop since 1959. Take a page from that book, BC Ferries. Hey, Peter. hey, how are you, mate? Good to see nice you. To see you. Fantastic. <laughs> we don't have a lot of time, right? No, we don't. We okay. got to get right out of here. Okay, my truck is parked right in front of the front I saw entrance. the truck. Okay, yeah. We tailgate, etc. We've got yeah. to do it there. We got to do the truck. So, what do we have? So, is this the one I've. Do you have two? <laughs> wow, will you look at that? That is absolutely And it's gorgeous. cemented too, so it's not right. only leaded, but it's cemented. So it's very, very tight. This goes, I don't know if you've followed along, but basically I have I a, followed it. Oh, did you really? I, I can't bed, sleep on right? Fridays. <laughs> so this is going to be effectively a night table because it comes on the inside of the door. It's mounted to the door. Oh, so when the sweet. door swings shut, I'll show you So you just made this bed. since we got hold of the other rushed it. I just made it yesterday. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> okay, so let's see what we can do here. Is this going to go in the first time? Oh, yes, it is. But there it is, the first view. Is that perfect or what? And actually, <laughs> this is the first thing anyone sees when they come aboard. Nice. They come in the main door, and it's right there. All right. Okay. okay. I'm just gonna just tuck that right in there. Just Throw another couple of these in here. Hello. 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 Are you guys? On, you guys? This will hold it. Let me see if I can just come on Here, this is this is Scott's daughter, Brittany, and Kenny, and Scott. What a guy, eh? And look, we just whipped the panel in. Does that look gorgeous? Tell us, tell us something about it. Anything about it, man? Uh, it's it's stained glass, but it's fired in a kiln, just like church windows are. Right. So this stuff right here, you could actually put outside. It would last 100 years. Okay. Fired at 1,275 degrees. You right. can check out the wooden boat experience That's and right. see a time lapse of how it was done. Well, we're definitely going to do that, and we're definitely going to put a link down below to his channel, which is just getting started, and it sounds like it's going to be really great wooden boat stuff. And will you be doing much glasswork stuff in your channel? Yeah, a little bit, you know. A little bit here and there. Yeah. Well, by the look of this, about as make... much as you cook. Right. <laughs> well, yeah. It's not entirely all that popular, actually. <laughs> okay, you know what we all got to do? We've got seven more minutes and we have to shoot a beer of the week. Okay, folks, we're going like lightning here. This is the beer of the week. So we're going to drink a beer on the street in downtown Victoria. Uh, I need a church key. I'll be right back. So we are drinking from my favorite brewery, and I thought it would be special for today. Uh, Driftwood's new double IPA. This is going to be a pretty nasty beer. Jeez. Now, of course, because we're in public, we can't inhale. All right. I'm holding my breath right now. Okay, so tell nice me something quick, quick more about uh, Glasgow and the Wooden Boat Experience. Uh, the Wooden Boat Experience is pretty new. We're here on the West Coast checking out wooden boats on the right. West Coast. Right. It's a little different with the salt water, and then we're going to head home, and I'm going to start rebuilding the Chris Craft, and then the Alco, which I hope to get Peter involved in. Well, excellent. Well, we're going to, you know, we're going to be in touch with all kinds of stuff, I'm pretty sure, from now on. So yes. let me know. Do you like that days? We do. This We've had a couple today already. Have you? Yes. That's a nice thing about the coho. You can drink aboard. Yes. Very good. All right. Well, cheers. 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 No, you I to, didn't inhale You at didn't all. inhale at all. No, it's <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Hey? It's pretty good. It's a little gnarly, but not too... All right, so well, that's Beer of the Week. We made it. We're getting we back, back on the well, coho. Let's get back on the coho. You have Cheers exactly to everybody. Cheers to you all. See you next week.